TGIF Fish Heads, we've made it to another weekend. Today is Friday, September 13th, 2019, and boy, oh boy, yes, it is Friday the 13th, and not just any Friday the 13th. We're partnered with a full, beautiful harvest moon in the sky tonight, so if you guys are anywhere on the planet and you can hear my voice or you can see this video, where you can get to a window or look out or go outside, which would be preferable, and you don't have cloud cover or rain, Go check out that beautiful, full, bright yellow harvest moon in the sky tonight. It's a very special time of the year for us, especially anywhere that anybody has anything to do with farming. So while you're looking at that moon tonight, be sure and thank a farmer because there's not one speck of food in any grocery store or Walmart or anywhere in any state or any country on this planet that a farmer didn't put there one way or another. They make sure that we are all provided for and nourished day after day after day whether it's a soup kitchen or whether you're making a million dollars a year everybody has to eat to survive so farmers are extremely important extremely important so make sure that you guys thank them give a little thanks uh, my, far, my my family out here is corn and rice and milo and cotton and soybean and peanuts so it's a myriad of things that happens there's dust in the air we we enjoyed a, a wonderful football game with the cousins last night uh, out at brooklyn high school and uh, it was just you know it's just a lot of fun it's a magical time of the year for us out here so just remember just remember those farmers are very important in the world, so thank them tonight when you're looking at a beautiful moon in the sky. We've got a lot to get into. Um, thanks for listening to that, and, and just be mindful of, uh, of where our beginnings are in this world. We all have to survive. We all have to eat. We all have to love one another, and this is a cool time of year for us. So, Anyways, uh, I wanted to answer some questions. You guys ask questions, and some of them are the same questions. I get asked a lot of the same questions over and over, and I never mind answering them. But I'm going to knock that out the first part of this video simply because some of you might be at work when you're watching this or you're flipping through and you're looking for just the highlights of the video so you want to see what, what's, you know, I'm spraying. But you guys also ask me, what pen? This is the most frequent question I get asked. What pen do I sign my baits with? Folks, it's going to be a Uniball Vision Elite. This is the fine point down here. This is the medium point. I use them both. Um, but what the key is, is that you want to find a waterproof and fade proof, preferably a roller ball. Some folks use Sharpies. I've found that I've got horrible bleed through, regardless of whether I heat set it or not before I put the clear coat on. I don't know how uh, the Alumalite, the UV stuff works because I, I'm not playing that game yet with, with clear coating with Alumalite. But I do know that epoxy, both two part and the KBS that I currently use, man it's a mess so I I got away from that I stopped using sharpies I, I graduated to the uniball vision elite and they're fantastic pens the one thing that you have to remember with these pens is that when you're signing a bait angle this down don't attack it and try and sign it because you're gonna end up scratching the paint so the rollerball works west <laughs> the rollerball works best when you are able to angle that at a 45 degree angle that's when it's going to be the most smooth and it's going to glide pretty well for you now that's what i use when i'm signing if i'm doing more detailed work like on this particular uh, i did a lot of tribal type uh this is a crawfish but it's a tribal crawfish and I, it's almost kind of like a dragon type deal it's a lot of hand detailing and all of these little black lines and, and a few of the other lines on here are all in the dots are all done with an acrylic uh, archival and, and illustration type deal and they're all waterproof fast food. they're a little bit more expensive and I'm going to show you the three my three go-to's that I use this is a Copic a Zig and a Pentalic so these are pricey these are not um, they're not everyday ordinary pens that you can pick up at Walmart you gotta go to like an art store or Michaels or Hobby Lobby Blick Arts Online, Ultrek Online there's a lot of places that you can get these um, but again these are, are waterproof pigmented acrylic ink archival quality another thing to, to mention with these is that you have to keep them laying down 
I usually put my pens straight up and down and my paint brushes and stuff like that, but these have to be stored on their side. So just a little tip to remember, and now you know what I'm using. But I'm sure that there's going to be one person or three per people. Hey, what do you use to sign your? But that's okay. I never mind answering you guys. So it's not a it's not a hardship for me to just type in Uniball Vision Elite. That's what I use to sign. The other things that I wanted to go through with you guys today. You see that I've got these little. Don't call them that, but that's what they are. These are these are little Jello mold cups. And uh, a lot of people put single serving jellos in here, or you know, if you're of the persuasion to put jello shooters in there, yeah, I've, yeah, I've seen that too. They're recyclable, so if you're not going to use them more than one time, you can toss them in the recycling bin and you're good to go. Try and get that paint out first. Um, but the cool thing about this is that they're completely airtight. They're, this is awesome. So this, I've got this out because I'm getting ready to hand detail three of these Excalibur 2.5 square bills for a client in that sunfish pattern and I hand detail all of that stuff with one of these which is a, a, a 10 over 0 so it, this is an artist round brush um, phenomenal it does really well for um, for detailing but uh, this this paint in here has lasted three months and you can see that it's good as gold it's very fluid there's no skim on it the same applies to you guys that are using KBS. I guarantee you it's not the KBS that's going wrong. It's somehow air is getting into the container that you guys are using. I promise you that. Not to say that there's never been a bad batch of KBS that's come out of KBS coatings. There may have been. Um, but if you keep it airtight, just like paint, it's going to stay for you for a very, very long period of time. So make sure you guys are storing stuff properly. But I use this let's see if we can find that there we go 10 o it's just a round artist detail brush that's what i do all of my hand detail with on stuff like that this brush this flat artist brush and that's if you guys don't know the terminology this is just a flat artist brush um, it's not angled there's an angled flat and then there's just a general flat this is the general flat I use this if I'm going to be doing any kind of stuff like a jointed bait where I'm not going to be dipping my uh, my clear coat where I have to actually brush it on and this is this has been brushed on KBS with a brush just like this uh, and it turns out beautifully uh, you just need to don't put it on a turner don't try and spin it because with KBS you're going to get bubbles uh, that's not the case with other epoxies that require a wheel or turning uh, but I use this to apply. There's one tip to this that you guys should know. Especially if you get that 25 pack from Walmart that costs about $6 for 25 brushes. First of all, you want to make sure it's dust free. So you want to kind of flick it a few times, make sure there's no dust or hairs trapped in the bristles. And then I'll take a any kind of any any kind of like needle nose or these will work and I give it that extra crimp just to make sure that it's pressed down because you'd never want to be in the middle of clear coating and have a bristle come out and stick to that clear coat on your bait sometimes you'll miss it and then when it's dry you're like oh man but just give it an extra crimp with some needle nose pliers to make sure that those bristles stay down real well so those are my little tips for the day um, let's get into some baits let's talk about some baits the last thing that I want to do real quick is I want to talk to you guys about that color mixer so color mixer is an app that we've discussed before I've put it in a video before and definitely some shop updates for you guys but color mixer is an unmixing deconstructing app for your smartphone and uh, no this is not sponsored by color mixer although maybe it should be because I like it I use it a lot but what you do is you take a photo you snap a photo of a chart a color chart or something that you want to recreate on your lure or even if you're just painting painting and it's kind of like going to the guy at Home Depot and saying hey can you make this color for me and then they do but they're doing the same kind of deal that with software that you guys have the now uh, ability to use and uh, let's say for this I'm going to shoot this up on the screen a uh, client asked me to repaint this so I had to figure out the color scheme so what I did was I grabbed a picture of this and then I put it into my color mixer I took a photo of the colors that I wanted 
and it came out like this. Now, obviously, you'll notice that it's not on a holographic pre-foiled bait like that Rapala that he showed it to me on, uh, but these are the colors. Color Mixer nailed the colors. So, super happy with, with, with what it's able to do, its capabilities. Um, very excited to add that to the arsenal of resources that I have. I am not sure about the, the app on an Android phone, but for iPhone, it's just called Color Mixer, and I'll flash that up on the screen for you right now. So moving into the baits that we're doing, uh, the, moving into the Color Mixer, he had asked for a match. This is the same client that uh, he had asked for a match for an old Rapala, and we were able to give him this which is really cool. It's very plain, simple. I did some detailing on the gill plates. The eyes are hand done and if you guys are new to the the lure making game and you want to get some out of the box eyes, just grab the the correct size of whatever bait you're making and leave the eyes on the card and shoot whatever color you want with your airbrush. Allow plenty of drying time and then if you're like me and you want to go the extra step you can apply a pupil and on this particular pattern I've got a white pupil on a black bait a black eye and I think that that's a really good match to this pattern in particular and then on the other one there's three of each I'm not going to show you each and every one of them but on the craw that he requested I was able to I knew that was going to happen see I'll, I'm getting ready to send these out <laughs> oh, where's my stagehand um, on the crawl that he requested, I put on a fluorescent orange dot to match the face over top of the same custom made eyes. Um, I don't do that on all the baits. I do like to match the hatch, just the plain old silver and golds and reds. And I like the, the boutique style stuff, and I'm going to show you one of those in just a minute with the Jetson eyes that are phenomenal as well. But just to give you an idea of what your capabilities can be, just if you kind of go the extra step and uh, if, you, if you're not finding an eye that you like use your airbrush and spray a bunch on the card whether it's black or whatever color you choose just make sure if it's you can go ahead and spray a white primer on that stuff first but if, if you're doing a black eye with a pupil just shoot it black you don't need that white primer I was able to use the, the premix that I had from these down here and uh, did some autumn craws this year and I really love 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 the way they came out these are on a Jetson eye and I always love doing these purple and orange to match anything that I have some orange in uh, as long as it's not gonna really make the the bait look screwy and these don't that's a good suited pair to the style of this bait so these are going out today also and then I've got the green Jetson eyes so I will, there's, there's his calling card, it's jetsonlures.com, go check out John at Jetson and uh, get some cool stuff going on today. Now this is on that holographic 1.5. And then last but certainly not least, let's show you the flub up from the first copperhead pattern that I did, which, I, you know, I really wasn't at all satisfied with the results of this, and it's not horrible, horrible, but it's certainly not the caliber of work that I'm used to putting out. Uh, it was a new, a new build for me. I hadn't done the pattern, which isn't as bad as I think what happened, what really happened, the truth of the matter, beyond just getting it backwards is that once I got the bait, the bait backwards, once I realized that the pattern was completely backwards, I think all the wind went out of my sails on finishing this build. I actually finished it on camera and I showed it to you guys. I showed you the transparency of what happens when we make mistakes that we have to keep pushing through. But then yesterday in between orders, I went ahead and did I did another pattern. I did the, the right pattern, finished it the right way. And I'm much happier with these results. I'm still not 100% on this thing. I'm, I still need to keep trying and building this better. But I was able to get a little bit more depth. I keep knocking this camera. I'm so sorry. It's on a Manfrotto tripod. It should be pretty stable. Sorry. Uh, but I was able to get a little bit more depth in this. Just by doing a few more accents. But the epiphany, the aha moment of yesterday was realizing that if I'm going to level up my game, 
I need to start doing detailed work with the proper reduced sprays. So that means adding some reducer to the paints that I'm working with, working at lower levels because once you have that reducer in there, it's going to shoot a lot more fine spray. It's going to atomize at a higher rate basically so you can get away with shooting at lower pressure, um, if that makes sense. But yeah, so when it's thinner you can, you can shoot it a lot lower and get a little bit closer to these. But yeah, it's not bad and these are John's eyes as well. Get that close up there. But much happier with the second one. The pattern's actually correct where the lighter is the biggest and then you have the the darker in between. So that is all the news that's fit to print. Go check that moon out tonight, folks. Enjoy it. Have a great weekend. Um, there you go. Have a great weekend. Love you guys. Mean it. Talk to you soon. Bye.